there, I'm Big Alias, and this, yes, this, is Outriders. I, I, I don't know, like, I, I don't know whether this is hyped or not. I feel like a lot of people talking about it, and I had no idea this was going to happen. I mean, I'd, I'd heard of the game, but that was about as far as it went. But Outriders, apparently, is a fairly big deal, and I want to talk about it, because I got it for free, so I played it. I mean, I'm not going to say no to something that's free, obviously, unless it's diabetes in which case i mean i'll probably say no to that but this is outriders this isn't diabetes or or, or is it no it's it's not it's it's outriders it's an rpg sort of destiny-esque looter shooter thing where um well it's a third person shooter and you shoot things and you gain loot and you level up and you get stronger faster better harder you get harder it's uh it's not one of those types of games but it is outriders and i'll tell you this um, my immediate thought when playing this game was This seems old. This seems like a really old game um, The gameplay the graphics the presentation the cutscenes the story the, the audio everything just feels Super old man. This is from people can fly uh, who did bullet storm um, And I think gears of war judgment, which was a gears of war I tried to forget even existed until I wikipedia fucking people can fly um, uh, yeah, so, and it does seem old. Um, I, I actually thought it was from the, uh, that developer who made the Technomancer and the Surge and stuff like that. Purely because I saw the word Technomancer, which I've never seen outside of the game Technomancer. Um, and I really, also the presentation, I mean, look, the, the, the thing about the presentation is, and I wasn't actually going to get straight into this. In fact, I'm not going to. Right. So, immediately, you open with a cutscene, which I was going to immerse myself in and watch with my eyes some popcorn and uh i was gonna make a joke about like a dick in a in a box or something you know just, that was gonna be great but yeah i was gonna watch it get immersed in the cutscene. unfortunately it was fucking terrible I mean, it was really bad uh, as far as i can tell the story isn't much i don't know because i couldn't continue watching it also okay i'm just gonna open up about this because this is uh this is not gonna be the second time i complained about this in a month but i won't stop the aspect ratio in this game pisses me the fuck off and I, uh, this is a call out to all entertainment providers motherfuckers quit messing with the fucking aspect ratio just stop just zach zach snyder stop whoever made the modern warfare cutscenes back in 2019 where they switched from th um four i uh, know what was it widescreen to full screen and third to third p first person stop Every music video producer of the past few years, just, just stop. All right? Every time the aspect ratio changes, it breaks immersion for most people, and it is fucking terrible, and there is no excuse for it. I don't care if you're trying to be quirky or kitsch, you know, trying to be all vintage. No, it, it, it just looks atrocious. And in this game, between three shots, I counted consecutively three different aspect ratio changes it went from widescreen to full screen to a hybrid of wide and full screen there is a name for it but i can't think of what it is right now it's like 10 by 9 or something like that um yeah no man it, and it was terrible and it completely broke the immersion of the game i couldn't even pay attention to the cutscene also i'm pretty sure the overall graphics changed from shot to shot in this game and most of the time in the cutscenes, uh, it's not great. The character models are not very good at all. Um, they do that thing where when you customize your character, it looks great, and then in game, it looks nothing like what you customized. <laughs> Man, even the audio quality is bad on the presentation front. Um, it sounds as though the characters are talking in different rooms. I mean, they are, you know, talking in different rooms, but even the mic quality is different from character to character i'm not fucking around my character had a different mic to the character he was talking to clearly because his was a lot quieter than the other character i it's it's really bizarre it, it it's honestly i don't I can't fathom it. Yeah, and sometimes like when a truck, you know, drives through some tracks and they show a shot of the tire driving through, uh, it has no effect on the environment and stuff like that. Um, and that happens in game two. Plus overall, you know, presentation wise, it, it wasn't mind blowing. However, I will say to its credit, because I am being very harsh about this game, um, a lot of the environments you visit are actually very interesting looking. And to me, 
a cool art style and cool environments are a lot more important than graphical fidelity. So for me, I actually prefer what they've done here. And I do really like some of the places you go to. There's ice caves, there's volcanoes, you know, grasslands. Um, it's very varied, unlike Anthem, or even to an extent Destiny, really. Um, place to place, you will encounter completely different places. You know, you'll go from a shanty town to a volcano, um, and the, the creatures you face. Uh, you face humans and creatures, and the creatures are very varied and very fun to shoot. Some of them have different uh, resistances. Uh, they attack in different ways. Uh, the attacks are very telegraphed, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, visually, despite its flaws and despite the fact that it's prevented me from even being able to follow the story, I actually like this game visually purely for what for the interesting stuff it's doing with the environment. So that's great. Um, I mean, you know, the character models are are what they are and i will say an overall um sort of like uh summarization of the quality of this game is that they have this like knock off destiny armor equipment sc uh, screen and it just runs like shit for some reason it's super slow and clunky and i don't know why man is this a triple a game i <laughs> really it cost cost as much as a triple a game uh the gameplay itself like i said feels very dated and i will say sometimes it does feel a little bit cheap um, cover doesn't work in the way that you would exactly want it to in that sometimes the character just can't figure out that there actually is cover there. I don't understand how in 2006 Epic perfected cover and we can't do it in 2021. Like the people can fly can't even figure out cover in 2021. I mean a lot of the time it does work but it's not as sticky as you would want it to be and like I said um, some of the places you try to cover on just straight up can't i want to get one more complaint out of the way before i go on with this too um so this game can actually be quite difficult and do be warned the um difficulty second setting is actually called world tier and also after the first mission uh where tier two was the highest and three wasn't unlocked i clicked on tier two and then automatically upped me to three for reasons i can't really understand the game became very difficult then and i knocked it back down this game will be staying on two because i like to enjoy games and not pull my hair out every time i want to play them um it can be quite tough but the issue is this game is tough in the frustrating ways, in the ways that games shouldn't be difficult. It's not a challenge. They don't find interesting, very varied ways to challenge you. They throw a lot of obnoxious, annoying stuff at you. So the way the health system work, works is actually quite interesting in that you don't regain health automatically, but you can through using your powers in various ways. So um, my character uses fire and I have two, no, three fire abilities that I can use to, um, tied to LB, RB and L and RB at the same time um, and also with a melee attack I produce fire as well so every time I set a character on fire I regain a bit of health that is very cool except the enemies will break your line of cover that is rule number one for me when it comes to games man well it's not rule number one it's rule number like 72 but it's what um, it's the whole reason I couldn't finish Mass Effect 2 on Insanity because if your game doesn't have automatic health regen do not allow the enemies to break your line of cover because it just becomes frustrating man you you have no option and and games should never make you feel as though you don't have an option but this does sometimes I'll be behind cover I have no way to regain my health. I have like 10 health and there's an enemy just about to break my line of cover. I can't melee him because he'll shoot me. I can't you know, pop out of cover and shoot him before he gets to me because he'll shoot me then. There's nothing I can do and it feels as though I don't have an option. On the annoying front, snipers are annoying too. There's a sniper in almost every gunfight and they just kind of break the pacing of it a little, you know? And like I said, the cover doesn't always work perfectly either. So there's a lot of this like inflated difficulty um that just becomes annoying it, it really does so those are my key complaints with it however i really like it i mean oh yeah actually there is one big concern i think i think we all know the servers are fucking dog i haven't encountered many bugs or glitches or anything like that but man the servers when you get to play this game um then you can take all of the stuff that i'm telling you in I'm not even, do you know what? I'm not even going to preach it. I've been preaching this for, for, for way too long. Uh, when will publishers just invest a bit of money into the fucking games they make if they're going to make them online only? For fuck's sake. This is a, I mean, these the missions, one thing that's great about these missions is they're effectively single player. They basically are. I've been playing this whole thing single player. And yet, I still have to have fucking servers to play it. 
Oh, Square, Square Enix, if you're going to publish this game, invest a bit of money. Give a bit of money to people who can fly so they can actually support their servers. We've been experiencing servers going down for like a couple of fucking decades now. It's never going to change, is it? They refuse to invest money into their investments. So that's annoying, but um, yeah, I mean, aside for that, when I do get to play it, and with all of its faults, I really like this game, and I, I can't stop playing it. And, you know, I don't, I've said many times on this channel, I don't like looter shooters, but there's something about the simplicity of this game, man. Um, it feels as though we live in this world with gaming of, you know, if you don't dodge in the right time, you die instantly and then you're set back to the start and you lose half of your experience points. Or if you don't have the right resistance on your army, you can't defend yourself from the orc troll, you know, stuff like that. It feels as though in a world like that, it is just so nice to just be able to play just a third person shooter, man. That's all this is. And if you don't like that, if you don't like something that's simple, then this is definitely not for you. But for me, I love the simplicity of it. And I think that's why I keep coming back to it. Yes, it has presentation issues, but I, I love exploring the world. And yes, the gameplay feels generic, but I like that. And, um, and I will say the loot is great. It's very addictive. It's fun. Leveling is fun. You gain straight up gain health every time you level up. And I love games that do that. I'm level 16. I think I have something like 468 health. Um, and you just gain armor points when you get better armor and you can visually see it on yourself and unlike destiny you can because it's not first person um, Your weapons sometimes they're just stronger. Sometimes they're weaker. I love that I love how it doesn't mess around with it and doesn't try to fiddle around with the formula and just tells you straight up You get better armor. You're stronger. You get better weapons. You're stronger. That's it That's all I need to know and I love that. I, I, I really do I really do enjoy this game. Every time I play it, 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 yeah, I'm having a great time with it. And the guns are fun to shoot. And you know, when it when it does work well, the gameplay does feel fairly good, if not you know old and generic. But it's fun, man. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I think I had a better time with this than I did with Destiny, which is what you know ultimately this this game is inspired by. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm actually having a better time with it. I'm really addicted to this game, and it's a lot of fun when you can get into it. Of course, there's a lot of fun, and I do like it a lot. Couldn't tell you what happens in the story. Don't give a shit about what happens to my character, but it's a lot of fun. The, the game is a lot of fun. So, would I recommend it? Yes. Is it worth the money? I mean, it's £60. That is a lot of money, and you probably could get more bang for your buck. I think if you had £60 right now, you'd probably be better off buying a few games in the game sale than this. I mean, if you haven't played something like Doom Eternal or something like that, then you absolutely have to cop that first. But... I think I still would recommend it. There's a lot of content here, and like I said, it is very fun. But also, if you're not into games that feel maybe a little bit derivative, then maybe give this one a miss. But yes, I think overall, I would probably recommend it. It's, uh, it's a whole lot of fun. Anyway, so that's what I think of Outriders, and uh, I guess I will see everyone later.